Nuestro tema de hoy Our es el riesgo climático y el desastre. ¿Cómo generar resiliencia? Um, Then we will have 
an introductory presentation by Denny Garan from Canada. He will be presenting. And after that, we will start with the first panel where we will discuss what is the role of insurance supervisors to increase resiliency to, and to promote inclusive insurance. After a coffee break in the second panel, we will discuss the role of the industry to increase resiliency to natural disasters related to climate change. There will be a lunch that will be an indoor picnic, and after that, you will um, be working in groups to discuss the difficulties pertaining climate change insurance that all stakeholders um, are involved with, and you will uh, devise alternatives to overcome those difficulties, and then we will have a summary at the end of the day, and I hope that you can stay for a cocktail that is um, that the insurance is hosting, uh, superintendents is hosting. We would like to introduce the team uh, that organized this event. Regina Simoy from AWA. Lisbeth by the superintendency. They will be here, and if you have questions, they are available to help you. And I would like to invite our first speakers, and we will welcome them on behalf of the Microinsurance Network. It is a pleasure to have here Mr. Francisco Astelara. He's the general manager of HIDES and a member of the Microinsurance Network. It is also a pleasure to have with us Van de Peter Van den Broeke, he's uh, an um, ad hoc legal advisor of IAIS, welcome. I would like also to invite our kind host, Don Joaquin Riesen, superintendent of the Superintendency of Insurance and Reinsurance of Panama. He will also address the floor with welcoming remarks. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Microinsurance Network and Catherine Pudmar, who unfortunately could not come because of health reasons, she asked me to welcome you. So good morning, everyone. And without a doubt, the climate events are causing greater losses throughout the world. And these uh, evidences of the gap the insurance gap that we have. That is why these events are important, where uh, the public and private sectors can work jointly to find solutions to reduce uh, this uh, gap and generate coverage uh, for and uh, protection for those people who are helpless vis-a-vis uh, -vis the constant uh, losses and on behalf of microinsurance network we are also pleased to support these events and we hope that it is a very beneficial day and that we can um, draw very uh, good proposals for the future thank you very much Association of Insurance Professionals. Brazilian.
means and, and bridging the protection gap. So the IIS has a long-standing tradition and a solid reputation amongst international standard setters in promoting financial inclusion and access to insurance. And besides preparing multiple papers for inclusive insurance markets on issues such as product oversight, index-based insurance, supervision of mutuals and climate change risks, a very important element is the partnering of the IIS with the Access to Insurance Initiative and the Microinsurance Network. The A2II is a key implementation partner that plays a crucial role in reaching individual supervisors and regulators to promote good, re a good regulation and supervision that is fitting for the situation in their jurisdictions. The Microinsurance Network is very important to the IIS as it enables us to enter into a dialogue with other main players working on enhancing access to insurance and for us to learn what is happening and what is, what is and what is not working in practice and why. We're here today um, because we have recognized that the protection gap, enhancing access to insurance and climate and disaster risks are interrelated and should best be considered together. The IIS has, together with the Sustainable Insurance Forum, released, released its issues paper on climate change risk to the insurance sector. While it was not specifically written for inclusive insurance or developing markets, the message it wants to convey is also very relevant for jurisdictions with a protection gap. Insurance can play a role in absorbing economic shocks from natural disasters and can help in overcoming countries and, and their populations, populations the disastrous impacts of these events. Today's forum is important to continue the dialogue with and between stakeholders on the role they can play to bridge the protection gap against climate and disaster risks by using insurance. I thank the colleagues from the A2II and the Microinsurance Network, as well as Institute Resilience, the Superintendencia de Seguros e de Rios Seguros de Panama, and the Asociación de Supervisores de Seguros de América Latina for organizing this event. And to close off with a few words in Spanish, espero que todos los presentes aquí hoy tengan un intercambio interesante y fructífero de opiniones of opinions and ideas, and the dialogue, uh, today's dialogue will pr uh, provide inspiration and energy to answer to these challenges. Thank you very much. Good morning. As a superintendent of insurance and reinsurance, it is a pleasure for me to welcome you to Panama. This would be the host country of the 15th uh, forum of inclusive insurance uh, that is uh, called uh, Climate Insurance Risk, how to generate resiliency and how to reduce the protection gap. For the first time, we have gathered here in Panama the insurance industry, supervisors, and insurance uh, regulators, directors of government entities, and experts in climate change to discuss our roles and responsibilities in this sector of insurance in order to reduce the protection gap which is uh, it represents economic losses between what has been insured and what is not insured that we are exposed to due to climate change and natural disasters. At the superintendency, we have worked to strengthen the Panamanian insurance sector, implementing controls and international standards that will allow us to consolidate the sector and making it ready to face challenges such as the implementation of NIF 17 um, sta uh, counting uh, standards, transparency, and protection to consumers. The uh, Panamanian insurance uh, industry closed uh, the year uh, with a growth of 7% growing above the GDP of the country and 
uh, going broadly beyond the expectations of the main risk um, rating companies, the number of insurance policies closed with a 12.4 percent. Well, the growth of premiums uh, has a good growth rhythm during the first uh, quarter of this year. Although these numbers and progress are clear indicators of a progress of our insurance industry, we must not forget that Panama, according to reports from the World Bank, is between the 10 countries of the world with worst inequality. Reports from the World Bank also indicate that climate change may push over 100 million people towards extreme poverty for the year 2030. The superintendency is aware of the need of the, uh, the most vulnerable and, and the poor that today have no access to insurance. That is why we want to thank International Association of Insurance Supervisors, IAIS, and we are a member of that association, Microinsurance Network, uh, Microinsurance Global Partnership, ASAL, and especially AII, for the opportunity uh, given to the Superintendency and Panama so that together we can find answers to these challenges. I am convinced that this forum is the first seed that will be planted to close this huge gap that we have in Panama. We know that insurance plays a key role in these solutions. We hope to share experiences and future projects with you with a great interest, interest uh, provided by uh, this type of event. Thank you very much once again to those who have made this event uh, possible. I see people who have traveled from far away, even from Mongolia. We have people participating here and those that are following us through uh, YouTube and social networks and all of you for participating and making this event a great success. Thank you very much and once again, welcome to Panama. Thank you very much, Joaquin, for your welcoming remarks. And I think that we are all eager to listen to the introductory presentation by um, Peter by Ben Ambrock. Denis Garan, sorry. Uh, he is an independent consultant from 2001, focusing on topics such as group insurance in Canada, microinsurance, health insurance, and regulatory systems, international regulatory systems. Please, Denis, uh, you have the floor. If this is in Canada, in Fort McMurray, you have insurance. If this is in a slum community in Bangladesh, you have no, no insurance. The outcomes are quite dramatically different for each of you. And this is what we're talking about today, is these disastrous events that happen to people and what uh, can potentially come out of that. I want to outline the increasing risk look at how an inclusion agenda can help close the gap. And we'll look also, and the part of this meeting is to look at who's gonna participate in the solutions uh, and what are the concerns potentially of the various parties and how can we really affect change. 
So what are, what are we talking about? Climate risk, as we have up on the screen here, we're saying climate risk is a vital instrument within a comprehensive climate risk management system, scanning a continuum of prevention, risk reduction, risk retention, and risk transfer, such as insurance schemes. And when we look at natural disaster coverage, it's for insurance for major natural catastrophes if of various types. Uh, I've been in the insurance industry for a little while. You can tell by my gray, little gray hair I have. And you can, I've had the experience of working with six, six different organizations that have gone through disasters. Uh, all of them have come out surviving uh, the disaster and helping people that they were intending to help. So what is happening uh, around the globe? We're seeing an increasing risk of uh, climate change and its impacts. We're also seeing the continuous uh, role of natural disasters that would have been happening anyways. The biggest issue, as was mentioned by several people, is that there's a protection gap. And this has the biggest impact on low-income people. So we'll need to talk about what are the actions we can take as various players. I've always been involved in the insurance industry, and I've always been concerned that the insurance industry has only looked at providing insurance for certain events. A more important function of insurance is to get involved in the risk reduction. And if we can get the insurance industry to get involved in risk reduction, and if we can get the superintendents involved in risk reduction, we will have a, a pretty good impact. So we're seeing increasing frequency and severity of events. For example, Swiss Re uh, in 2008 estimates that there was a 165 billion US dollars costs from the natural disasters. And of that, only 85 billion uh, was insured. Nine, uh, 2018 was the fourth highest uh, year of payouts. And if we look at the last 10 years, the uh, payments are actually increasing quite substantially. In 2017, Munich Re estimates that the cost of disasters was $340 billion. And if we look more locally at, in Latin America, a study done in 2012 indicates that uh, the cost of natural disasters had cost the region $115 billion, and that's more than double from the previous studies, previous periods. If we go back to uh, 2008, we can see that a little less than half of the disasters